All right, guys, welcome, welcome back to Scruffy Life Sessions. This is your host, DJ Scruffy, and I am live right here with the founder of Heroic Studios, baby, Will. How are you, man? Welcome to the show. Man, it has been a long time since I've seen your beautiful face. How you doing, dude? <laughs> doing pretty good, man. What can I tell you? Another beautiful day here in Los Angeles. Um, pretty good, man. Excited to see you and have you on the show, man. Thank you for coming on. Ah, no problem. Thanks for having me. I know we've been trying to plan this out for a long time. Uh, last time it fell through. This time, uh, believe it or not, I got the I got the rotor, man. So I might sound a little sickly here, but um, I think it's uh, for the most part I'm good. Oh my God, man! I I I have to tell you, the rona here in LA and Las Vegas, the amount of people that I know now that have gotten it um that have persevered from it unfortunately some people have lost their lives from it um i'm glad to be blessed to have you here and still you know uh, still have you here compared to all the people that i've known that either have struggled to uh survive it um or keep their everything together uh, how are you coping with it honestly dude i'm, I'm gonna say like it's not i think for me and my hiking that's it. um i've been told that it's different from person to person like, if you're healthy Kind of don't have anything to worry about. If you're kind of like obese or like out of shape or like not overly healthy, then you don't have issues. But honestly, I'm going to say right now, I don't even think it is the Rona. I think I just might have a cold because I tested for this two weeks ago and I came back and negative. But then I think a few days ago, I started losing taste and smell. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. I have this nice, delicious plate of food in front of me and I can't enjoy it. What's going on? Why like, can I taste anything? So then, um, People started telling me, hey, that's kind of like one of those symptoms for like COVID. For like COVID. You might want to take a few tests. So um, I'm isolated inside my office that you can see here. Um, got out everything that I need. And honestly, dude, I feel great. The only thing that might be a little bit annoying is, like I said, the lack of taste and smell. Um, and then I'm a little congested, but I think I probably dealt with allergies for that time of year. And a headache from time to time. So, like, it's honestly like how it would be if you had a cold. Yeah, like nothing like overly like crazy people are kind of like with like of breath. I don't have that. I can knock it out squats and push up to stay active in my office. Um honestly it's it's not what the media has been saying to my opinion. But it, like I said, it's different from person to person. You have a different person depending on how healthy you are. Because as you know, I, I was a gym rat. I go to the gym like at least four times, five times a week. Um, five a.m. I'm there, knock it out, go back home, do what I gotta do when I go to work. But um, sadly, in 2020, I didn't really go to the gym as much, but I did stay active. I did do my runs, I did do my push-ups, and my abs, and my abs. I was doing something as opposed to the gym. Like, you know, I miss the gym. But honestly, on a scale of one to ten, I give it about a solid like five. So it is what it is. Oh man, it does sound like the media is painted to be. <sighs> I mean, I, I, every time I hear news about it, I feel like the, the fake news or the media, they just really paint out to be the symptoms to be a little extreme. And uh, everybody I know that has been around our age has not experienced anywhere, anywhere near what the media paints it out to be. Uh, uh, for example, um, you know, my father got it. And I mean, he was at home for about a month, but uh, I mean, he had about one or two rough nights. And the rest, it was just smooth sailing. Um, oh, was, Harry Cat, that Harry Cat had it. The Harry Cat's got it, yeah. And he didn't. He didn't really like. How old is your dad? Your dad is in like late forties, early fifties, right? Yeah, I mean, he's like, yeah, he just hit. He's like early forties. Okay, so he's like, he's actually like I've seen your dad. Your dad is like upbeat. He's good. He's like always high energy. So I, I wouldn't see your dad like actually succumbing to this thing at all. Yeah, yeah, he was able to, thank God, he was able to shake it off um, quick and get back out there. Um, he didn't really experience the lack of uh, loss for taste or smell. My grandfather and grandmother did, though. Um, one day, my grandpa, they both got it um, after my dad got it, like a month or month and a half after my dad got it, my grandparents got it. And my grandpa goes to the casino often, and he often gets like, pastrami sandwiches loaded with mustard and that's when he realized god man i got the rona i can't taste the mustard <laughs> could you imagine yes the, that's the worst because i had a bowl of ramen the other day and i'm just like 
I ordered some ramen and then I had this like this popcorn shrimp and I opened up the shrimp and I'm like, oh dude, this is going good. I can't wait to start eating it. And I'm like, where's the taste? I, I can't taste it. Where'd it go? And I'm like, no, no, this isn't happening. What's wrong with me? I like I had no taste, I had no nothing. So it was kind of weird, but then like I feel I feel fine. So like going back to what you were saying about how the media overhyped is my grandmother who was a She's 80, maybe turned 81 this last year. She got it, but she was symptomatic. She didn't show any symptoms at all. And she's actually about to come out of quarantine in the next couple of days. So, like, I'm seeing everyone that I know get this thing, right? And we've been told since March, like, it's been super contagious. It's deadlier than the flu. People are going to die. We're seeing tens of millions of deaths after the end of 2020. And I'm like, no, because I've had it. Even Donald Trump has had it. People in there in that age where they're saying, if you get it, you're fucking done. They got it, and people are coming out of this thing like it's no Miami. So I'm like, well, what was the deal? But I think it's because it was an election year. So, you know, the fear mongering on trying to get people to do what you want them to do via the media, that's what this was about. Because I mean, think of yeah. it. Listen, you got the election year, you got half the country who are just like so like over the top about getting Trump out of office. Miraculously, you get this virus who they were talking about. What did we do in the pandemic era back in 2019? And you're like, why are they talking about this? And then March of 2020 hits, and then it's all coronavirus this, coronavirus that. And you're like, man, this seems kind of weird. We're in election year. They were talking about this pandemic like scenario back in 2019, and then all of a sudden 2020 happens. And it's like mm. kind of suspicious, mm. right? It's a little suspicious. Yeah, I completely agree. Completely agree. Um, th- this is conscious programming to the highest degree. Um, I know this can get extremely controversial, but yeah, uh, I don't see this like a, I see all these kind of events kind of like planned. I know the 1% of the world and the elites, they have their own agendas and their agendas aren't always lined up with the people's. Uh, I I would say more than 80% of the time, they're not aligned with us. And yeah, here we are. Yeah, I mean, you you see it, you see it. We have all the people on like the news networks and all this money telling us what we need to do in order for us to stay safe, yet they're like chilling out in their mansions and stuff doing whatever they want to do. And I'll, I'll take LA for example. Like I'm, I'm from LA, I grew up from LA. But you guys, you guys governor man, I don't know what the deal is, but he's shutting down like small businesses and people have to work, yet he's allowing Hollywood to, to follow the guidelines that were put in place for people to operate the business. And I'm sitting there like, yo, what's that about? Why, why are you letting certain people follow these guidelines, but you're letting like the people who have to get up and go to work every day, who have to work their businesses, why are you not letting them do what they need to do? And I, I saw millions, of, I was a million, but I would say dozens, dozens of videos on Twitter and social media of people who own small businesses in LA just going out and protesting. And people are like, well, they need to go out and protect themselves. And I'm like, no, these people have a right to do what they feel is best for themselves and their family, right? We're adults. We know how to assess the situation. If they're saying, like, you got to stay so many feet apart and wear a mask, and that's what you need to do if you want to go out. I understand that. But to tell me that I can't go to work because so-and-so who, like, down the street may have coronavirus, no, I'm an adult. I should be able to assess my my risk assessment on myself. You know what I mean? No, 100%. 100%. You know, uh, I think – and this is why I – I have I have my views and thoughts about what Florida is doing. You know, my Florida, my wife just came from Florida and she basically just told me that like everybody, nobody was wearing their masks, things like that. But setting the precautions aside, most businesses had the governor gave the businesses uh, the opportunity and the option to stay open and, you know, take the level of precaution. And I kind of take my hat off to that because I feel like I don't like when when a organization or government uh, defines the lines what we can and cannot do when there's room for opportunity to still do and be safe. So, ah, man, LA dropped the ball on that. I mean, I get it. People are just out of control out here. Yeah, and it, it, because it's borderline now because you see it happen. A lot of people they're fear mongering. Like, they've been fear mongering since Donald Trump got in office. Like Donald Trump wasn't the the worst president. Like honestly, he was actually, in my opinion, and this is. Contrary to popular belief here, but I think he did as best as he could, considering the circumstances up until you know coronavirus hit in 2020. The economy was up, unemployment was down, um, but you know just day after day, hour after hour, it was just how bad this dude is, how orangey is, 
how mean he was. And I'm like, man, you guys have literally nothing better to do than sit here and talk trash about a guy who literally just bought pizza in the Middle East in his last days in office with that treaty. So when you see that, when you see how like much fear the media is pumping into society, people are quick to trade their freedom and security. They're, they're, I'm sorry, they're quickly to trade their freedom for security. So they're saying, hey, you got to wear a mask. Um, otherwise, you can't go outside. Boom. You know, you put on a mask, you're able to go outside. Hey, you can't go to work uh, because the coronavirus won't take care of you. You know, that's a very slippery slope from what our founding fathers envisioned for our country versus what, you know, people who have fled from countries and states that have been ridiculed with, um, I won't say ridiculed, that have been written with communism and socialism. You know, people come to this country and they're seeing the same thing happening here that they fled from back in Venezuela or wherever they're from. And it's like, you people are not, you're not listening. You're not listening. These people who are who immigrated here, who have come from actual oppression, are telling you, hey, this looks very familiar. We should probably take a few steps back and reevaluate what we're doing. And I think that's what this whole pandemic was used to kind of push the agenda of what you said, the one percent of the elite, because the elites aren't going to fill any of the repercussions here. They're not going to feel it. They're not going to really think twice about it. People like you and me and people who have to get up and go to work every day and you know, feed their families and pay their bills. If the government decided, hey, we're just going to shut everything down, um, I'm not okay with that. I'm not even okay with the government shutting things down and saying, we're just going to pay you to stay at home. I don't want to get paid to stay at home. I want to get paid on my hard work and what I decided I wanted to do with my life, and that's to draw comments write books and go to work and be an engineer. That's what I do. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable. That might be okay for some people. That might be okay for other people who are just like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm cool with just staying home and, and chilling out and getting paid by the government. But for me personally, someone who likes to work, it's not okay. And I think people need to understand that, that the government paying for everything, it's not, it's, I don't know the word, it's, it's not the thing you do if you get, if you get one. I agree. It's literally like if you're, it's like litching onto the tit and you just have to depend on them. Ooh, right. we're going to squirt a little bit out for you because you're, you know, we got you like that. You got to right. suck on our tit. And honestly, I completely agree. When I see people like, oh man, we need to depend on them and this and like that, like, yo, being independent, like right. grow your business, take this as an opportunity to get to the next level. Right. And I, and I, I applaud people when, when March hit and we were all locked down, do you know how many people took that extra time and that advantage to start businesses, whether it was making face masks or starting writing that new book or starting a, a business that you can operate online or anything like that. Like there were tons of businesses coming out of the woodwork. And I told you that people, especially um, Americans, we're probably the most resourceful people on this planet because we have the opportunity. We have the opportunity to go out and say, okay, well, I'm stuck in this house for like the next, I don't know, two, three months. What am I going to do? I got to eat. I got to kind of roof over my head. I got bills to pay. There's got to be something here that I can do. And people were just bawling out, coming up with new ideas and new concepts and feeling that need to actually build a business while they're in lockdown. And people were coming out making thousands of dollars a week, a month. And it was insane. And I, I applaud the people who took the opportunity because every day is an opportunity. Just because it's this pandemic is going around and it's supposedly killing millions of people. So, and I, I think supposedly because we don't really know what the true COVID numbers are. Some people might have died of a heart attack, and I say, well, COVID did it, and that's not statistically accurate. And I'm saying supposedly, and people can get mad at me with it or, or whatever, but supposedly it's supposed to have killed millions of people when it happened. But people, despite that, did not let that stop them into becoming more entrepreneurial. Uh, and it's death and started a business during this pandemic. And I, I get at the end of the year, I give everyone who started their own businesses a high five, people who started Kickstarters and comic books and books. Um, I gave them a, a round of applause because they took something that was supposed to have been deadly and fearful and turned it into a business that was even back during the stimulus check that they gave out. I still have both of my stimulus checks. I haven't even cashed those checks yet, mainly because. Maybe I'll meet them, maybe I won't. Point of the matter is that I don't need the government to take care of me. You need to figure out how you're going to get through this on your own because that is what Americans do. Figure shit out despite 
those adverse and, and those, uh, those things that have no telling about. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, man. Perseverance. You got, you got to persevere and uh, innovate, you know, invent and simplify how, how to get, how to, you know, here's my problem. All right, we'll establish some solutions and apply it, like get to the next level. And that being said, um, for the listeners that we have here, what tips, uh, what, what two or three tips would you give out there to someone who maybe is just starting the groundwork of uh, starting their new idea or new project? What three tips would you have for brand new creators out there, Will? Number one, get started. There's a lot of people out there who have ideas who and come to me and tell me about their ideas. I'm like, yeah, it sounds great. When are you going to get started? Oh, I don't know. I have so much to do. Listen, if you're passionate about something, if you're like, this is a great, I can't wait to tell you about it. If you're that passionate where you have to tell me or anybody else about your idea, then you need to just get started. I usually tell people, don't talk about it. Put your head down and go to work and you'll show me afterwards. Because talking about it is a lot different the actual scene, all right? First, number one, get started. No matter what it is, get started. Number two, make sure you're passionate about it. Because most people that get into something new and they're not passionate about it, oh, they want to do real estate, but they're not really, they're not really excited about real estate. Oh, they want to be a personal trainer, but they're not really enthusiastic about going to the gym. They want to write a book, but they're not really enthusiastic about writing. If you're not enthusiastic about the things that you want to do, you're not going to do it. You're not going to wake up every day and be like, boom, I'm ready to go. You're going to wake up and be like, oh, I got to do this again. And that's the same with going to work and, you know, earning that paycheck. If you like what you do in terms of a career, things that you do every day, um, do it. That's what you need to do. Put passion about it. I like being an engineer. I like building things. I like understanding how things work. There's some days where I'm just like, oh, I do have to go do this. But the, the, the better days outweigh the, the, the less of it. Or short thing in my comic book thing and everything else that I'm doing. I do get that, you know, overwhelming feel, but I do have to get up and understand that. This is what I like to do, because if I don't do it for a few days, I start to get itchy. I start to be like, oh, I gotta do this. So make sure you're passionate about it. And number three, put out positive vibes and be happy about what you do. Because if you're doing something authentically for the people, something that you really appreciate and you're going to give it to other people because you think that they're going to enjoy it or you're genuinely giving it to it, then you're going to put that energy out to work and it's going to come back and do the same thing. Prime example, when we got locked down in March, everybody just started a comic book and it's actually going to be launching in less than a week. Actually, a week from today. Oh, um, snap. Free of charge. You guys can go on the webcam, you guys can read it. It's going to be a weekly updated story that I decided to give back to you guys because there's a lot of people out there who are freaking out about this virus. They don't know what to do. So I thought to myself, hmm, what can I do to ease the nerves of people who are, you know, still locked down, who don't have really much to do, who are trying to find something new to kind of do. So that's why I came with this new idea for a comic book and I've been working on it ever since. And I hope people really do enjoy it because I enjoy making it and it's free for everybody to go and read uh, free of right? So again, Get started, be passionate about what you do, and be happy about what you do. Those are my big three um, advice for me to I love it. Thank you for those three tips, Will. I am sure that uh, our listeners are going to find a lot of value in that. Hopefully, if you guys are listening, please apply it. Uh, consistency is key. These are extraordinary tips by Will. Um, aside from that, where can people support you? What pl- uh, work, plug yourself in? Uh, wh- where can people connect with your art on social media? Where can we uh, chime into your brand new book that's coming out this month? Um, you can find the book on Webtoons, and I'll, I'll send you the link. I think I sent it to you already, but uh, the yeah. uh, Webtoons page where you guys can go and read it starting next Sunday, January 10th. Um, you guys can go check that out. I'm also on Twitter. Um, most of my Twitter is kind of like for the comic book slash political press. So um, if you guys want to follow me there, I do say some pretty controversial stuff. But I do it in a sense to kind of start conversations. And I think they're trying to start a fire. Some of the stuff that I like to, to ask or to say is a genuine question or a thought that I want to exercise the minds of others who may or may not agree. And sometimes it doesn't come off as such a fire, which is also fun. But um, I do my best to try to open it. So if you guys want to follow me at Twitter, it's Will at Heroic Studios, and that's AT Heroic Studios. I'll send you all the links and stuff. And then Facebook, which I don't really use very much, and then Instagram, same thing. I don't really use 
I hope you didn't have much to do but I do have a YouTube channel um, that <laughs> I also sent you, so you can plug that into and join my YouTube channel. I'm going to do a lot more uh, videos with that in the new year, 2021. We made it. Gang, gang, I'll make sure to place all the links that he just discussed in the YouTube uh, description. And of course, for all of our listeners on Mixcloud, you will see that on the episode description. Also, um, Will, aside from your new project coming out in January, what else should we expect from you this uh, 2021? What you, what you cooking over there? That's a very good question. You know, um, in my job, I'm a mechanical engineer for the company in America. I, I do a lot of designing. Um, Lately, we've been experimenting with 3D printing. Um, I actually went out this past month and bought not one, but two 3D printers that I have sitting in my, uh, my I guess it's a closet, but it's like, it's big enough to like set up two. It's actually pretty fucking big, so I can set up two 3D printers in there. So I've been playing around with that, doing a lot of uh, building and cosplaying and building people who like to do cosplay and stuff like that. So, I wanted to get more in depth with that, do a lot more projects, and um, get that going. But mainly 2021, I kind of want to build the Hero Studios brand for my new comic book um, and get people excited about that. Um, and I like it when people are asking questions about what is coming out, what is happening, because I've been working on this book a lot. So my main focus is basically doing that and getting that book off the ground and just getting something people can look forward to every week. Nice, nice. Hey, man, here at Scruffy Life, we are excited to follow your journey and see everything come to life. Um, super, super excited for everything we got going on. And um, question, um, you're still publishing on Amazon, uh, the Amazon book marketplace, right? I am. Um, I actually did my tour drive this year where uh, all the sales that I made from books, uh, they get donated to my choice for children's uh, Christmas time. So we did that this year. We raised about a little over a hundred bucks, not much, but it's a hundred bucks worth of toys that we were able to go and um, uh, give kids. So yeah, the books are still on Amazon, um, but a big spoiler warning that if you go buy those books, the, the twist that's happening in this new book that I'm doing, that's going to be launching next week, it's going to be spoiled. So I would rather wait for you guys to go get those books until after um, a few chapters of this book has been published. So um, I haven't really been pushing that for that for that reason right there because it's uh, um, it's all connected. And I don't want people to go ahead and get the book and be like, wait, these are the same characters here. Oh no, um, it's been spoiled for me. I've already read this book, you know? So it's kind of one of those things, but um, I'm still working on those characters. I'm still doing a lot with that. And those books will forever be um, my first ever uh, project, you know, first ever books that I've ever published, but I might go back and do comic book manga adaptations of book books at some point, uh, but right now it's fun experimenting with other characters that I've introduced before and kind of going deep into their backstory and then going from there and understanding where they came from. So um, there's a lot of intertwining things that are going and elements that are trying to fit together, but uh, for the most part, it's all going to come full circle around at some point and we're going to be able to kind of understand what Oh man, oh man. Oh, Heroic Studios is cooking a whole bunch of stuff in 2021. I'm excited. Yeah, man. I'm trying to stay busy. I'm trying to do as much as I can. Um, some days I think I've been off more than I can chew, but um, I try and balance it as well as I can. You know, come home. Because I'm up at five, I do a page or two, then I get ready for work, go to work for like eight, nine hours, sometimes even 12 hours. Come home, pour a drink eat dinner, love my wife, and then work for a little bit more, like a, little, a couple more hours to get that, that, that page going and get it done. And, you know, just give myself deadlines. I have to get so many pages done in a month in order to keep up the stockpile. Um, so when I do launch it, I don't run out of content for that. So yeah, sometimes I do bite off more than I can choose because sometimes I just want to come home and chill, have a drink, and play a few video games, maybe even read a book. Um, but I know in the back of my head that this project will get done. Um, and it, it, needs, it, it needs to get done. That's all I have to say. I mean, I, I decided to do the story. It's a lot of work. It's just me. And it's to the point where I like, I've been off more than I can do, but I decided to do it by hand. I'm going to stick to it to the end. 
And the worst part about it is that I don't have any end in sight. <laughs> it's just one of those things that I'm just going to keep on going until I feel like, okay, time to wrap up this story and move on to something else. So I see myself doing it for like another at least two or three years, to be honest, until the story I feel has been told and I can find it back up. Oh, man. Oh man, that's gonna be ridiculous. I can't, I can't wait for that. Um, and and just, I, I feel you on that. You know, there's some like for me, uh, a lot of my journey has been the same. You know, like I'll spend a couple months maybe only focusing on um, uh, like DJing, just put it curating DJ mixes, and then uh, an internal clock where, where, where I'll get a vibe where like, oh right, undress well. It's time to work, uh, focus more on the visual aspects of your brand, and right. you you just have that that juju vibe of like okay what's next yeah exactly so um it, a lot of creators they ask me like you know how you stick to one story and it's like you got to make it interesting for the others and i i hate that i've did, I, 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 but I hate that i've done this for myself but now it's like whenever i watch a movie i subconsciously pick apart the problem with the plot or like characters at the end and before I never did this, I've never done this before at all. But now that I've been watching a lot of review videos and like movies and video games, my brain now is it's able to like take those narratives, pull it apart, and then I ask myself, oh man, I hope my story is like that. Because it, when you try to break down the originality of the story or anything like that, you kind of find yourself doing the most generic things when it comes to plot threads and how plots are supposed to work. And it's really annoying that you don't really see that happening. Um, you know, a villain trying to take over the world. Well, why do they want to take over the world? Because he's a villain, he's a bad dude, that's what he wants to do. It's like, that's not really a motivation. Just because the dude is bad, that's not really a motivation for why he wants to take over the world. I know a lot of writers, including myself, have ended up, you know, going across that plot thread too, just because they need some type of looming threat overhead. And they, they come to the post where it's like, um, no, that's not a good motivation. So I find myself picking apart a lot of that stuff because when it comes to writing, you want to try something new and original, but you really have to sit and think and ponder what's going to be original and what's going to appeal to the reader and the audience at the same time without going overly thinking about the motivations by not underplaying the character's motivations at the same time. So it's, it's kind of a, it's a really hard process to kind of figure out and to do that without even establishing any plot holes, which, you know, everything has plot holes. I don't think you can get away with our kind of about stuff that has plot holes, you know what I mean? Sounds like you have the sauce. You got the sauce, baby. You got it I, down. I try, but honestly, when it comes down to creating a, a, a story or a character, I usually start with the character first, and then I create the backstory, and then I take that character and all the backstory, and I need to find it into the plot and go from there. Um, but sometimes I will scrap it because the plot is just so generic and it's just so bleh. I like I've seen this before 20 years ago when I was a kid and I had something that I don't want to do anymore, you know? And as a writer, you got to come up with new stuff because like there's nothing original out there anymore. You can see it in the media. There's people just remaking stuff or redoing the franchise that haven't been in the media for like 20, 25 years. And they're just making it new with new actors, same story, nothing new about it. And it's kind of like, why? You know, do something new, do something different, write a new and engaging story that's going to, you know, have people sitting in their seats for hours trying to figure out where the story is going. And that's the kind of story that I like to write and like to tell the mystery box. Like you can completely understand what's going on and what the plot is happening, who these characters are, but where is the story going? And then when you finally get there, it's a 180 twist. You have no idea how you got there, but this is the story and you're like, wow, this is that's the kind of story that I like to keep people in suspense for long enough to where they understand what's happening and then when they finally figure it out, nope, it is something completely different. And it all makes sense at the end, you know, story of the details and little plots and you start to paint it all together in one little <laughs> picture that you're trying to paint for the audience. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. Well, it sounds like you take everybody on a roller coaster, baby. Yeah, I got to because, I mean, you have to... You have to engage the reader. Like you have to uh, introduce these these points because it's your concept, it's your baby, the story that you've written. Um, you're not just shitting on your audience. You really want to give them a generic story that they can 
not only I wouldn't say relate to, but can you know? Oh shit, it's Sunday. Let me see what this update on this new story I've been reading. You know, something to look forward to, just like with a TV show or with a movie. You know, everyone was hyped for Avengers Endgame because I'm saying you want that's going such a big cliffhanger that the next year they couldn't wait to go see what the hell was going to happen with our characters so, with the Avengers. That's the same kind of story um, that all writers and creators should be going for. It's raising that level of suspense and thriller to where people they can't wait until they get to the next episode or the next chapter to see what happens to the, the characters. And I think that that's in my opinion, Marvel, when they did in game, that's going to be very, very hard to top because in game was like here. So now you're here, how are you gonna do phase four to go past, you know, Marvel um eventually? And you kind of set the bar here. You got to go here. So how exactly are you going to go there when, you know, you pulled out all the stops for the Avengers Endgame? Same with all the writers out there who are trying to write stories. Like, you're going to write a story, you're going to end it. And I think that's why a lot of writers get in their stories because they, they pulled out all the stops. There's no way they can top this finale with another finale, right? You know, sometimes it's just great to just stop. And, you know, I pulled out my finales in my book but I still think that there's a little bit more that could be done more. And you have to set up and leave a little bit more room for you to, if you want to return to that story and write a little bit more, that you'll have the ability to do it. Yeah, I mean, you tap in there and you never know when, the, just when you think of the finale's there, you, you might have another, a little twist or, uh, or a side story to come along, you know? Yeah, and it's very important that you do do that you know, there's people, <clears throat> me, there's audience out there who want to, you know, who want more Avatar the Last Airbender, and you're like, uh, you, you kind of can, but, you know, that fight between the Aang and the fight of the old time, I mean, can we do much? That's the whole story there, so what can you do to kind of, you know, top that, you know, and being a writer, you got to figure out ways to innovate and make the story better, or at the very least, just kind of let that story be and start off something new. You gotta always like something to do. Because if you're writing, if you have a certain style of writing, it's a lot of people do, then writing another story that's relative, that's similar to what you've done before, it's gonna attract the audience to the So storytelling is very important in my opinion. So I like to write a little bit more than comic book form, or even like mentioned, I like to tell stories that are fun and engaging for people to kind of sit back and understand and watch and enjoy. Oh man. Oh man. I am so excited to continue to follow your journey and see your upcoming content. Will, man, what can I tell you? We're just coming close to our wrap up time. Heroic Studios. Will, I, it's extraordinary to have you here in the show and share your journey. And I'm excited to have you here again. Uh, I, I definitely want to have you here um, before the release of your book. So um, if you're listening, just know that Heroic Studios is coming back to Scruffy Life Sessions. Um, real quick, uh, just before uh, we, we clock out, um, any last minute words of inspiration out there for future creators or animators uh, who are ready to, st uh, to share their story? Just do it. Like I said before, get started. You don't have today, you don't have tomorrow, you're not even promised next week. We're in a new year. I mean, what better way to get started on that book you've been trying to do with that YouTube channel, you can try to have a podcast you can try to record. You know, you just need to go ahead and do it. If it's something that you feel is going to be interesting, just start. Just start, no question asked. Just go ahead and do it. If you know, no, no, go ahead. And there you go. You heard it loud and clear here, right here on Scruffy Life Sessions, the founder of Heroic Studios, Will. Thank you once again for sharing that inspiration. And if you're out there, apply it, baby. Just do it. The subtle art of not giving a fuck. Just get it out there. <laughs> Click record. That was a good book. The subtle art of not giving a fuck. I, yeah, baby. I, I implore everybody to read that book. Is that for like you know, the thing you do for New Year? Read that book. The subtle art of not giving a fuck. So like, you really going to um, not give a fuck after you. <laughs> it lives up to its name. All right. Oh, it does. <laughs> All right, guys. Respect and love. Once again, this is Scruffy Life Sessions, where we discuss the greatest tips and tricks on getting started being a creator. So wherever you're out there, whatever passion you are, apply it and let the growth 
Come in, baby. Scrub Live Sessions. This is your host, Scrub Live, I guess, and our guest, Will, from Heroic Studios, baby. Let's get it. <laughs> 